Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we're going to do some drawings. Apologies for the camera. <clears throat> and um, besides the drawing, the main thing is the watercolors. So I know you haven't seen me for a while. <clears throat> but we're going to draw, I'm going to draw very quickly to give you an idea of what we're going to paint. And what we're going to paint is very simple, but we'll need either two of the usually sized papers we use, which is um, six by nine, you know, six by nine, and uh, or the same, and then, or just one, and then you do the two pieces that we're going to do on either side smaller it is possible okay so if you only have one sheet you just flip it and we're gonna do one either side sorry um two pieces two paintings in one um, sheet of paper so to go over i'm gonna draw with all of us what we're gonna paint so you're gonna need a pencil and regular paper okay pencil and regular paper to draw what we're going to first um, decide to do. Then, after we draw with the pencil and paper, we're going to paint. So for that, you need your brush, you need your paints, you need your waters, And you need your um, paper, watercolor paper. So what I just said, just to refresh, if you have questions, is that um, we're going to need two pieces of paper, one per painting. We're going to do two paintings, two paintings, OK? Um, so two pieces of paper because there's two paintings. Uh, but if you have only one sheet of paper, then you could just turn it and um, do one on one side and the other one on the other side. <clears throat> okay. So let's see what we see. That we oh yeah, and um, I didn't ask. But I'm going to use just to show you. I have shown you this before. If you have tape around, I'm going to tape these ones to kind of frame them as we paint. You'll see. So if you have tape around, great. If not, don't worry about it. You don't need it. It's just for the future at home when you do your paintings, always have around you masking tape. So what we're going to do. I'm going to do the two drawings here, but obviously uh, the two paintings, each one is going to be in a single paper. Let's see. So I'm going to do the, and imagine these are two pieces of paper. I always feel it's very bright. So I'm not sure how bright should I do the video. Sorry, I'm playing around with the light. But if, I want to make sure that you get to see it. Okay, so one painting is going to be just very simple. This is, and I mean, both are very simple. That's the whole point. Um, I found these ideas also on the internet. Um, but um, so one of it is just the sky. It's going to be the sky. We could have done, we could do the color of the sky blue. We could do, it's at night. It's a night. Um, 
we could do the color of the sky pink orangey you know so i'm gonna do it a little bit blue and purple and i'm gonna put here night sky in the city what's going to make it a city is that we're going to make the outlines of these buildings over here so imagine some buildings i don't know kind of like in boston too Kind of like an outline like this of a city. I don't know. Maybe this was like this. You get the idea. <clears throat> But this, the outline and the buildings are gonna be completely dark, okay? So this sets, this sets the rule, dark colors last because they will juxtapose. They'll go always on top of the light colors. So always don't forget that rule in watercolors. Think about watercolors as a play of transparency, showing the paper through the colors. And dark colors, actually, the darker the color, the less you do that. So that's why you want them last. Because once you put them down, you'll be, you not be able, you won't be able to get that effect with light colors. So if I put a black, a dark color, and then I put a lighter color on top of it, it doesn't work. I, I already shot the paper. Does that make sense? So do your lighter colors and build towards the darks. So this is why this exercise will be good. Obviously, we may have the moon somewhere, some stars that we're going to try to keep an eye on as we paint so that we could keep them um, white. And then um, the other drawing, sorry, the other painting will be just, you know, I like, I did, we did a beach videos recently with the palm trees and the shore and the sea and the sand. Some si simple rules. And now I'll have the sun somewhere, let's say here. In the sky, the water, the horizon in the water. And then um, a boat. We'll do a bow kind of over here, I guess. Or something like that, right? And the shadow of it. ready you could have drawn with me or you could have just seen the video i mean just watch the video but to go over here's this moon i'm writing what here's the sun this is in the city this is at the beach there's a boat there's a reflection of the boat here's the horizon water sea Sky. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody sees that? Let's
Okay. So now get your papers for the first one, the one about the city. So I'm putting this water over here. Uh, let me see if I can get everything in a shot. Actually, I'll put it over here. Perfect. So now with your pencil, you're going to lightly draw where your moon will be, which we're going to put it. You see, I'm not going to do the lines this time. Um, if you're curious about the, the rule of thirds, you can watch the previous videos, the last three. But without making lines, I do have an idea that the rule of thirds points maybe here, 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 here. So I could put my moon maybe around here. There's four points highlighted that divide your space in nine squares. So without making lines, I do get a sense. Does that make sense that they might be around here? And that will divide the piece in one square, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because there's a dot here, dot here, seven, one dot here, eight, and nine. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do this. The moon, half moon, is like the letter C. And the letter C inside this moon will be narrower. You see, narrower. So it's like a cookie that's been or something like that. Someone took a bite of. Can you see? That? I um, I'm drawing very lightly because that's how you should draw for watercolors. Okay. And then the city sky, just like we drew it, remember? Or or you could just, if you watch me draw it, that's fine. But you see how I drew it? We're going to put it at maybe one-fourth. No. Yeah, yeah, one-fourth, one-fifth. So divide the paper in one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. Maybe I'll run down here. And the way you do it is just, just like, uh, imagine there's an imaginary line here, right? But the building, some of them look, some of them will go down. Then you make another line. It's like a Tetris puzzle. Then one goes higher up. Kind of cuts here, goes down, cuts here, goes up. Maybe this time it doesn't go that down. goes up like this. Maybe this one has a chimney. Not a chimney, like something up here. 
you could make the outlines that you want. Yours doesn't have to be like mine, okay? Um, I'm going to move the water because, um, but I know there's a tall bit in that one here that's going to have like the look of prudential, I guess, but kind of like this. That's okay. That these two are almost the same size. Um, and then over here, maybe a parallel one. Just random, random silhouettes, so random lines. There you go. Now you can see what I drew. But you see, I made an imaginary line to know where they kind of where they fit. So this is the bottom part that's going to be black. And that's the effect that's going to make us believe that it's at night. OK? Why don't we draw the next one? And the reason why I say this, this it would be great to just paint right now, because we are just, just drew it, so we could just paint, right? The same painting. And, and our minds don't have to, like, think of the other painting. But I'm going to, for the sake of the video, I'm going to draw it and the next one. Um, and you're going to draw it with me. But again, if for some reason you only have one sheet of paper, I should have said this earlier. This drawing that we just did, you could have done it just on this half. And the next drawing that we're going to do now on this half. So then you get both paintings on one sheet of paper and then cut it. Okay. Does that make sense? So you either make one painting per page, per paper, or two paintings in one sheet of paper. So the boat in the water. I'm going to put the drawing with it here. I'm going to move my water for a moment again. <clears throat> same same kind of rule, but I'm going to maybe do the, the sun inside the square, sorry, inside the rectangle here on the rule of thirds. So um, the horizon will be maybe around here. So divide this in thirds, divide the paper up and down in thirds. Thirds means three sections. One, let's see, one, two, three. Nope. So you see how I'm I'm moving my fingers to get the right measurement. So one, let's see, one, two, three, close. One, two, nope. One, two, three. That's better. So one. So now I don't move my fingers. One, two, but as I move my finger, I look at this finger because I'm going to place this one right where this one was. So let's do it again. Now that I have a lot, I'm not going to move my fingers because this is the distance that is a third. So I keep my eye here in this finger because I want to put this one where this one was. So this is one, two, three, to make sure that the paper is divided in three 
by this distance. So now I make a mark here. I can make a mark here. I can make a mark here. And now I know this line, imaginary line, is about a third. And actually, the horizon in this bowl scene um, won't be clearly defined. Okay, it's going to be misty. So the line is here, but I want you to draw it very, very lightly because the painting should cover it. I know you could probably not see it in the video, but it's there. Okay, so the moon, or the sun, sorry, if we divide this in, if I have my four dots, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I'm going to put my sun right in this one. Again, I'm drawing it very lightly, but there's a circle there. And it should be actually be even lightlier because I don't want to show too much pencil. Okay. <clears throat> boat. The boat will be here. Very simple to draw a boat. I mean, this boat we're drawing. So the drawing we're going to do is, it's like a thin triangle, but you first put a... Uh, uh, the mast is a line. One sail is bigger. You see, one sail is smaller. And then the base. Yeah. So when you do the base, come on in, come in. You see, and come down a little here, and this is the base. So it's not a, so it's not a rectangle. You don't want to do a rectangle, so you want to do top, bottom, but then go in an angle. And this angle here, rather than this angle, that sharp, you're going to come a little more straight. Not too straight, but a little more straight. And this was the front, this is the back. And you got the idea of small cell, sorry, small cell, bigger cell. That's how they really are. Okay, angle, kind of. See that? So now I'm going to put it on the actual painting here. Mast going up. Not too high, I should have. <laughs> no need to go that high. <clears throat> Small sail on this side. Tall cell on this side. So the key, the key thing here that I'm not doing is that we need to keep this this line, okay? So the bowl has to be aligned with the horizon. So it has to be a straight line. There you go. And then you try to do the same thing under here. So this is a line. I'm gonna make the bowl smaller, just a little bit smaller. And the reason is because I want the reflection to fit in my paper.
okay. Still doesn't fit entirely, but it is fine. Okay. But if you can keep your boat smaller, what will happen is you can actually make it fit into the um, basically it won't it won't it won't get out of the paper here. You know how I don't agree with that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm not gonna emphasize too much color painting of the boat over here so it doesn't feel like it got cut out. Perfect, that's it. Let's start with um, our city. So for the city, we're gonna wet our paper. If you have a thicker brush, flat thicker brush, um, use it. to wet the paper in the part that's like, not the buildings, but the sky. You see, I put a lot of water. And as you wet the paper, uh, it should bend. We know this by now. And it should also um, shine. Don't be afraid to put too much water. Don't wait too long when you're going to put the painting after. This is soon because if you wait, then your paint, when you put it, will be dry on, sorry, wet on dry. And we want wet on wet. Remember to create that kind of <clears throat> mystical effect or misty, sorry. Uh, now against the light, I'll, I'll check how's my wet paper, if it's saturated, we want to saturate it. Yep, okay, so now I take my purple I'll have to make purple, I think. No, I have it here, if you have it. You take a little bit and you see how it plays out. Perfect. So now I'm going to be very strategic about uh, leaving room around the moon. You know, like, I mean, leaving the shape of the moon on touch is what I'm saying. Okay, so the more pigment you put, if you're gonna do that, put it up here. But everything is gonna kind of blend in and go, you see, with the water, because it's wet, because the paper is wet. <clears throat> and then, yep, do it while it's wet, okay. It's okay if a little bit of it, you see, is moving towards the moon, that's fine. But the key is that it's all the same tone, <clears throat> meaning the same amount of pigment. Please, if you see a bulk of too much purple, uh, try to spread it. It's okay if you put down, you see a lot, but then you spread it. So in the first time you put it down, See how dark that is? But as long as you spread it into the water, that's already on the paper, you're good. And remember, we're going to put more pigment up here. Work fast because the paper is drying. You know, the paper is absorbing all that water and drying as we, as we work. and get lighter down here. You know, when you go into the buildings, kind of try to keep it light.
I'm going to go back and define the moon because um, that space is still white, as you can see, but I want to define the outline. But I'm aware, please be aware, just like I, that um, the paper is still wet, so it could still do what just did. So you have to be aware that you're going to probably have to wait a little for it to dry. Okay, down here is very wet, but this is the idea. And now I'm going to go up here and put more purple. This color I'm using is purple. Up, up in the sky. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to put the tape. We'll do it on the other one because I really wanted to show you how, yeah, it's okay, how you could frame your work um, as you work. You know, when you're done, you, you just take out the tape. And it sometimes helps you secure as you work the paper into the board or table. <clears throat> um, see, I'm defining the, the moon a little better. But it, it doesn't work unless I... Um, I wait for it to dry. It's okay. If you do something you don't like, since it's still wet, remember it's still wet, you can easily Pick it up with a clean brush. <clears throat> Let's see. This is because it's, it's, the brush is clean and dry and the paper is wet. So I'm, I'm using the, the brush as a sponge. Okay, it's still wet, right? Um, Still wet, and I'm gonna experiment with some things. The back of this pencil of mine is completely flat. The eraser is right there, but let me see what happens if I tap my pencil like this in a wet, hmm. or with the eraser. Does it create kind of little? I'm just experimenting. You know, Picasso used to say that the study of an artist should be like a like a scientist. And I, I think it's a good point because sometimes we get in the same habits of doing the same things. And that's great. That's fine. We get good at something. Why not continue doing it? But when you challenge yourself with new things, trying new things, it's when you you assess yourself too, because then you're like, okay, I don't like that. I didn't like how this go. Let me not try that. Let me try this. And that's how you discover how you really like to do things. Um, um, I'm not saying when, as you did, as you try things, you have to just like everything you do. No, you, you take those back. So you make, I mean, you take some of them, you say, oh, I didn't like that. So instead of, um, using there's different ways to make stars in this case i use something right that was dry and make circles um to pick up and, and get rid of where the, where there was paint already but the paint was wet does that make sense so that i was able to pick it up um because it was wet another technique could be when we were painting just like the moon leave little circles on touch you know another thing is don't worry, paint everything, and then with uh, opaque white paint, no watercolor, acrylic paint, you could after do the stars, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. So you, we see the moon. I may define it. Where's my brush? A little more. <clears throat> I 
just have to be aware that um, you see that if I do that definition, I have to spread that color around. You know, not just define the moon right there, like spread it. That darkness that I went around, I spread it around. So it's not just in that spot, it's all over the sky. Okay, now very simple. I'm gonna set this aside before we use, um, you could either use a black, you know, to do the buildings. And, but I'm gonna probably use purple again, but then put black in it and make it really dark but still you see the purple. But the reason why I'm setting this aside and doing it after is because uh, we're gonna wait for it 15 minutes to really dry. So when we get these corners and lines, right? When we paint them, we get them sharp because the paper will be dry. If right now I were to do this, unfortunately the paper is still wet and in these lines, um, they will not be sharp, right? The, the paper will still take that color and kind of spread it. Does that make sense? So when you want sharpness and your stroke of the brush, if the paper was already wet, you have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to set it here on the side. You can still see a little bit of it. And let's get into this painting because I promise you two. So if you have only one sheet of paper, right? You must have done this one right here to the left on this side. And now we're going to do the right side. But if you have two pieces of paper, like I do, then you um, you can just do the painting on the single sheet of paper. Same idea. It's just now we got a more surface to wet. Okay. The whole thing will be misty, so but we're gonna kind of leave the boat untouched for now. But everything else have to be wet. Okay. So wet. Spread that water. The paper needs to be wet. And the paper is working as a sponge, you know? So same thing that's happening with the previous one. The whole paper is getting wet and it's bending and it's shining. So if you move it around the light, I'm gonna show you in a moment, it should shine because the water shines when it's on the surface of the paper. And actually doing that with the light and the reflection of the, allows you to also see spots that are not yet wet. So let's see. Let me show you how it shines. You see how it shines? The, I mean, there's a reflection of the light. So there may be a spot that's not shining and that means the paper is not wet there, but this is all wet. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna be very careful in this one because I wanna be even more subtle. So we're gonna quickly grab red, but it's gonna be so little red that in this water it becomes pink you see it is red but since we're using so little of it in the uh, wetness against the paper it actually becomes pink because pink is actually red that's light up that's lighter you know with a little bit of white but in this case the white is the paper that is under okay <clears throat> but you see how i'm barely barely putting 
too much of it down in the paper. And that's what I want you also to do. So use the minimum. I'm kind of painting in the circle of the sun, but leaving it also alone in some way. So you see, I painted around it. Maybe there's a little more red up here because it's the top of the sky. <clears throat> you could get a little more darker, maybe up here with the reddish, because think about it. You, you keep raising your head and looking more higher and higher, and it actually is darker, just like the, sky, the space. So space above us. <clears throat> Okay, so down here, I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna, we're gonna mix, this line won't be entirely defined, the horizon. So I'm gonna mix very gentle blue. With the pink. And let's leave some gaps, let's leave some um, gaps of the white, I'm oh, sorry, the white of the paper, you see? I'm putting a little more of blue right under the bow right here. It's supposed to be shaded, you see? So, right under the bow, you see? It's okay to go kind of dark, -ish. but the rest should blend in with the pink on the sky. And now we don't know where the horizon actually is. <clears throat> okay. Again, if you're watching this or you want to watch it again at home, you could pause it, go back. Um, but let me show you. Uh, this is the top. You see how there's still. I haven't touched this. And actually, I should work some, and this is the water down. So I should work on that sun and put that orange. The sun will be orange very lightly. Again, please take a little bit of, we don't need much <clears throat> of the pigment. You see, just a little bit. We don't really need. Maybe in the bottom blends in, and the top is a little more defined. Okay. <clears throat> now the bow is just darker blue. It's the same in blue, it's just you're gonna use more of the pigment. You know?
thin right here on the top make sure the mass is a little darker define you know maybe with a little bit of purple see Basically, not the entire thing has to be the same tone. And then the actual boat, then even a little darker. So I picked up a little bit of purple for my blue right here for the actual. Did you see that? For the actual boat right here. And this is uh, dried on wet, no, sorry, wet on dry because the paper didn't really get that wet here. But I really want to make sure uh, that um, it's really dark. Not too, too dark, but dark is the darkest thing on the painting. I'm keeping this right. Okay, we're almost done. We have to do those buildings in the other one, so it should be dry enough by now. I'm making the mask really, there you go. <clears throat> and then down here, uh, the mask, again, a little bit of it right here inter interjected. And then with blue, with our blue, right? with our color blue. We um, make some intersected lines here, thick, kind of in the water. As a triangle, opposite triangle, sorry. And like I said, I want to be very gentle down here because I don't want to look like um, we didn't plan and the paper got cut off. I don't want that to be perceived as such. Okay. <clears throat> um, Let me get this really dark. Yep. I think this one is done. It's as simple as this. There's some little dusts in the water there. But this this painting right here is done. You, but you see how subtle, please, the subtleness comes from the paper being wet. That subtleness of the blue. I, and then when we paint it, the ocean, right? We purposely left gaps of white. Um, this project is very important to do. If it didn't work out that well, you could do it again. You could do it as many times as you want. But please be aware that the, the key is to, um, to kind of use your color um, Gently, you know, you don't need that much color. And you will understand that these watercolor sets will last you a long, long time. Because when you paint, you're, you're, 
you're moderate not because you want to it's, it's you moderate because you that's how the painting um uh effect you want you know less paint more water to make them transparent or okay and and wet you see because when it dries look it gives you that sense of that it was wet. Wetness. Okay. Now over here to wrap up, and I'll put them together quickly. Mix purple. Mix purple with a tiny little bit of black. You use the water to get that color out. Okay. But the painting that you're going to paint, I mean, the paint that you're going to use, shouldn't be too, too, too wet. Because you want that opaque effect. You see, because everything is dry, those edges are a little more sharp. I'm using a thick flat brush to make those straight lines, but you could use this one too, the one you have that is round and thin. You see, you could draw a line, like you're drawing. Get those edges and then fill it in later. <clears throat> you see, I could get easily inside because I know my edge has been painted right there. So I'm not afraid to fill in. Okay, let's finish this. I'm gonna do all the outlines, it's like drawing, and then I'm gonna fill in just to show you, okay? Let's see, I'm drawing with my brush, what I already have drawn, what we have drawn. So I'm doing all the outline first. I raise this one a little. Okay. If your painting is drying, you need a tiny little bit of water to make it flow better. But that will make it a little more lighter. So make sure that you go back and put more paint, you know, more pigment. You you can tell when the paint is lighting up because it has more water. That's all. So then add more pigment. But don't just do pigment without the water a little bit because then it's too dry to to flow, you know, to flow on the paper. You see, you want that easy flow of moving your brush okay we're almost done i'll have to we'll have to fill this in i know I'm, it sounds like i'm rushing it but if you're just halfway through or you know you could watch me finish mine and then um you'll finish yours but i'm gonna uh have to f or you too if you're doing the outline like me first you use the rest of the time to fill in right to fill in all this color look you see how i keep picking pigment because i need pigment i don't want it to be transparent I want it to be opaque.
with a big brush, remember the brush, yes, moves and covers more, but then it also needs more color, more paint. So you'll be using much more paint when you're using a larger brush. Just be aware of that. Yes, you cover more areas, but um, you're using more paint because there'll be paint left inside the brush. You know, you're carrying a lot of paint in the brush, even though you put it on the paper. So as you wrap up things with a large brush, you want to get all that paint out into the paper. Um, so when you clean the brush, you don't have to waste too much paint in the water when you clean it, you know, because just to be aware of those things. So you see my painting here. But you see, this is dark, dark, darker color, opaque. These are the buildings. Perfect. So I spreading colors around. And we're basically done here, too. I'll sign them later out of, but I clean my brush. Clean your area and your brush. I'm moving the waters out here to avoid this. <clears throat> I'm going to put both paintings next to each other. I'm going to close this as I dry a little bit of this extra water. So when I shut this, it doesn't spill. But that's done. My brushes are mostly clean. Clean them really well. And this is a project that we did today, everybody. So this was first. It's just... We were doing the buildings last. Oh, and I didn't put the tape either on the second one. Uh, I'm not used to it, but the idea, let me bring this close. The idea uh, with the tape will have been that um, you put the tape beforehand. You know what I mean? Like, let's say here. Right, a little bit of the edge. So when I'm done and I pull it out, you get this wide frame on your work, naturally done by the tape. Okay, so this is the, uh, I'll bring them closer to the camera so you can see this is still drying, you see, but it's very opaque and dark above, sorry, juxtaposed on top of the sky. Um, but from the top, this is it. Nice close up. Focus, please. I hope it is. Yep. And I can run it down. You see the the outline. Sorry, the outlines are a little sharp because the paper wasn't wet by then. So that's the the city night, and this is the boat. So it's very subtle. That was the idea with this one. Um, something I want to do, I'm not happy with, is this cell. It's too defined here. I mean, the blue inside, so I'm going to mix it up a little, you see. So you could always with wet, with a wet brush, come back. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope everybody keep painting, paint on your own time too. And do these exercises again, okay? Maybe you like this, you keep it and you do it again and give it as a gift or two gifts, three gifts. And by the third, fourth time you do this boat, maybe you keep the last one because you got better at it. You feel more confident. I don't know. Um, but yeah, do more and more and more practice. It's all about um, the experience when it comes to watercolor, being familiarized with the, the effects that the water costs. Take care. I'll see you soon. Thank you.